Hello and welcome to Strelkomania. In this video, we will be exploring a different slicing strategy to minimize the transfer and exposure to surface trap fibers off printed parts. And from a previous video, you might have seen some of these results, where I showed what a little bit of rubbing on a PLACF and nylon CF part could result in on our fingertips. This is our nozzle and our filament is coming out. Let's imagine this be our bead. We assume that a lot of the fibers end up getting oriented in the direction that we're printing. When I looked at microscopic images of the outside layers of CF parts, I noticed there's actually some fibers that end up poking out and not fully along this assumed direction, the print direction. Now, if these fibers are exposed directly on the outer walls, if we handle them with our fingers, we end up with fibers on the fingertips that who knows where else they'll end up. One post-processing strategy for 3D printed parts using chopped fiber reinforced filaments is to just clear coat them to seal in these surface fibers. But what if we explored a pre-processing strategy where we use a trick in the slicer? What if we print our part at its core with the fiber filament and then the outside of that part, both the outer walls and the top and bottom layers are actually a normal non-fiber filled filament. Is this strength still good in comparison into a fully CF part? Is there any improvement? Well, I have the data for that and we can totally do this in a slicer using modifiers. Let me show you. So because currently in Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer, you're not able to specifically designate parts of the toolpath like your outer walls, your infill, your overhangs, etc., to be printed in different materials, we can use a modifier to kind of work around this. In my slicer, with my selected layer height of 0.2 millimeters, I can go into quality and figure out the line width of my outer and inner walls. That way I know how much to shrink my modifier in my cat. So for example, outer wall, inner wall, then in strength, I have six wall loops. I'm going to go down to two. That means that for outer wall, inner wall, I'll need to offset my tensile dog bone to 0.42 plus 0.45, which is 0.87. Okay, I'm now in Fusion 360 where I have already recreated my tensile dog bone. Here I can then modify it to account for that new thickness from the actual outer and inner wall line widths that I know the slicer uses. To create my modifier, firstly what I'll do is just extrude, remove the outer wall thickness so I only have the core infill to do so just hit extrude grab this face cut then I can just drag and remove it so now I have my core without the inner and outer walls next thing I need to remove is two top and two bottom layers so again back in my slicer I know that my layer height is 0.2 millimeters so two top two bottom would give me 0.4 millimeters that I need to remove from the top and bottom so I can grab this core face and remove 0.4. I can indicate a negative to flip the direction, okay. And then for my bottom, I will do the same. Grab this face, extrude, cut, and then to indicate the proper direction, make sure I note where the arrow is facing. And again, two bottom layers, so I removed 0.4 millimeters. This geometry is what I can then import into my slicer and use as a modifier. Let's check that out. To do that, I will just export it as a new STL. Now that we're back in our slicer, I'm going to add a second material and then change it to PLA and PLA-CF based on the samples I have results for. My first material or outer material, I want to be PLA and then my inner material, I'd like to be PLA-CF. Now, if you're doing the nylon counterparts, you might also have to change the type of build plate to an engineering build plate, so keep that in mind. Now, I will insert my main file so this would be the unmodified tensile sample 
this is with the original dimensions. Now, if you've worked with the slicer, one thing you'll quickly realize is that it auto snaps the parts to the build plate. So if you've ever wanted to say, make it float in the air to overlap two parts and have them print together, whether an assembly or something else, if I change this value to say six, it literally will not move the part upwards in the Z direction. It keeps snapping to the build plate. This is not ideal when we want to print a core where the outer walls are PLA and that core is another material. So the key workaround here is using modifiers. To create a modifier for this part, you right click on it, hit add modifier, and then load. This will let you select any STL to use as a modifier, but in our case, we're going to be using that one I just removed the top and bottom and outer and inner walls from in Fusion 360. Now what we need to do is align the modifier to be in the center core of this main part. So I can do that just by hitting on the main part, better select it, go into object view, hit the main part, then I can pull its orientation on the build plate. So 128X, 128Y, and 250Z. So I will apply those to the modifier. 128, 128, and then 250 is by default because the modifier belongs to this original geometry. The very last thing I need to change is the material type of the modifier. So as you can see here, it says default. If I click on it, I can select my second material, which is my PLA CF that I want to print. And then when I slice it, voila, two outer walls. We've got a PLA CF core, as well as two, one, two PLA bottom layers and one, two PLA top layers. Now you might notice here where my modifier itself has two more walls. So in total, these slicing parameters, there are four. The workaround here is make sure your modifier modifier is selected, go into strength and just remove the wall loops. So when I reslice it, total there are two walls, which is just the PLA. Great. So my actual samples in this video and my previous video were 100% infill. I can go ahead and change that in my modifier print settings here by indicating 100% for sparse infill density and allowing the slicer to change the pattern. There we go. Simple as that with modifiers and some critical thinking in CAD to create a custom modifier shape. So this is exactly how I created my dual material samples to remove any loose fibers or transfer of fibers when printing a fully CF filament part. The idea is that whatever part you're printing, you print the core or as much of that core in your carbon fiber filament and then you make the outside walls and any top and bottom layers using the same base polymer but not carbon fiber filled. Looking at how this alternative slicing strategy impacted tensile behavior, you can see a summary of mechanical properties in the table here as well as the stress strain curves, but if this doesn't necessarily make sense to you, a quick summary, the dual material samples ended up showing slightly greater ductility and a greater peak load before failure, so they were slightly stronger in that sense, which we see in the table by that slight increase in that ultimate tensile strength and strain at break. Although there is a decrease in the fracture stress, here I have some pictures pictures of the samples I used to collect the previous data. We have our tensile dog bones that follow the ASTMD 38 standard for plastic tensile testing. Most notably, you can see in the two single material prints that they fractured along the raster angle. So these are all printed flat on my build plate with a standard 45 degree fill angle or raster angle. They cracked along that 45 degree for the most part with the dual material PLA outside, PLA CF inside the fracture zones are a little bit different. So those results focused more on tensile strength, but let's think about flexural strength of this dual material print that incorporates carbon fiber material. These slides that I'll go through are actually from Mark Borge University. I'm not taking credit for them, but I just wanted to show you the graphics because it would make this idea make more sense. One thing you should know is that the Mark Borge printer prints with onyx material, which is the chop fiber filament, and embeds continuous fibers. It's a line 
line around the walls and then potentially infill. When we think about stiffness of a material or a part, it's how much that material is able to withstand flex. So for example, if we have a beam like this that's fixed and immovable on one side and you apply force on the other, the beam will bend. One strategy to minimize this would be to add fiber in sandwich panels where the blue indicated here are continuous fibers. If you're not familiar with what a sandwich panel is, you sandwich a normal polymer, in this case the chopped fiber onyx, between top and bottom layers that are the continuous fibers. Depending on the thickness of the beam itself and each sections can improve the stiffness of the material. And so if you're not familiar with the sandwich panel, it's kind of a similar idea as strength and force distribution of I-beams that are used in buildings. So my curiosity here is if we print with, say, PLA in the center and then PLA-CM the top and bottom, although it is chop fiber and not continuous fiber like in the Smart Forge material, I wonder if there will be any improved stiffness of the part that will undergo flex because of the sandwich panel property because of the sandwich panel theorem. Maybe this will be for another video. Now again, this is just an idea for potential increase in stiffness. I have yet to test it and I'm unsure if because we're using a chopped fiber filament and their individual fibers, not long continuous ones, if the stiffness of the part will actually increase greatly. But I will show you how we could go about this in our slicer using modifiers. I can move my modifier and just make it skinnier. So let's say I will quarter Z dimension, maybe one. This is skinnier. Now I can duplicate this modifier. If I do so, it's still linked to this base part. Then I can move these modifiers to be right after the two top layers and then right after the two bottom layers. This creates a sandwich panel where we're printing the PLA CF at the top and at the bottom and then the actual inner core is still base PLA with the idea that this could potentially increase stiffness. How much? Not sure yet, we would have to explore experimental results. This is an idea I just had while filming the video, that's why there's really no data behind it. If you're interested in results, please let me know and I can explore this further. So going through the layers from top to bottom, I have two top layers, the start of my PLACF section, so the top part of my sandwich panel, the center part of just PLA, and then the start of my bottom PLACF for the bottom of the sandwich panel, and then the last two top and bottom layers. Mm -hmm. 